Let's talk one baud drivetrains, because updating a big box bike to a one baud doesn't have to cost a lot or even be too complex. That said, it can be a little intimidating for someone that has limited knowledge of bike components, specifically drivetrain components, or even limited access to bike specific tools. Yet practically every day I receive multiple messages asking me what's the cheapest and simplest way to go to one buy on a big box bike that comes with a three buy. And let me show you what I mean by one buy so we don't leave anyone behind. This is a one by drivetrain, a single chain ring. There's no derailleur, no triple chain ring up front to worry about shifting through. Nice, simple, and light. This is a 3 by or triple chain ring setup, most common on big box bikes or even entry level local bike shop bikes. And 3 by if you see a bike that has 18 or 21, 24, 27 speeds, they all have a triple chain ring up front and that's how they get the extra speeds. You have 3 up front and then either 6, 7, 8 or 9 in the back. And in this case it's 21 speeds, so simple math tells us 3 by 7 and here's a backside view of this chain ring setup and you can see why it's called a three by or a triple chain ring because there are three separate gears small one one that's larger and one that's even larger so why would anyone want to go from 21 speeds down to seven by changing this three to one because that would mean less gears right well that is true but it is very popular to go to a one by setup these days in mountain biking because it sheds weight. I mean, these are still gears. There's three of them. There's this derailleur that gets ditched. There's a shifter up on the handlebar. I mean, that's all extra weight and extra complexity if I haven't already mentioned that. And if you watch Kev Central, you know that when I switch to one by, I usually go with these because they're affordable and reliable. These IXF one by crank sets, and they even come with their own external bearing bottom bracket. I have to have some knowledge here. I have to know about the width of my bottom bracket, the spacing where I want this to set, what chain ring to put on this. It starts getting complex and that leads to that question, how do I do it cheaply and easily without having to even mess with this bottom bracket? Well, there actually is a super cheap, meaning free, and super simple, meaning zero knowledge required way to get a one by effect here and that would be to shift into the middle chain ring on this three by so into the second gear which would be this one here which is 34 teeth because all of these big box three buys are 24 34 42 so that 34 that's within the range that some people use on a single chain ring or one by setup I use a 32 personally because I like super easy pedaling, but a lot of people use a 34. That's what you have here. So if you shift into this middle chain ring and then just leave everything as it is, this is going to act, your derailleur, it cages that chain, so it's going to act as a chain guide to keep it from moving. You're going to have a one by. Now, if you're lucky and you have a big box bike that, say, cost you $400, there's a chance, like with the XR Pro, that you may have a triple chain ring setup like this Suntour XCT that actually has bolt on gears. In which case you can unbolt these three gears from this crank arm and then bolt on whatever chain ring you want. So you could pick like the 30 that I use or go with the 32, 34, something like that. And do it that way, but not very common anymore. Uh, seeing these less and less, pretty much everything is going to these stamped and riveted just because they're so cheap and there's so many that have been made. Now I don't want to get technical because this is all about simplicity and something easy to do that practically anyone can do, but I do need to mention something about the bottom bracket. I showed the external bearing bottom bracket that I like to convert bikes to, but all of these big box bikes and even entry level bike shop bikes, matter of fact I think you've got to get up to seven, eight, nine hundred dollar bikes before you'll start seeing these but these all use what's called a square taper bottom bracket. And the square comes from here. You see that that hole is square and the taper is because running through the middle of all this that these pedals bolt to is this taper spindle. So square taper, pretty simple. And I say that because those IXF kits that I use, they convert everything to an external bearing bottom bracket. Most of the kits do, but 
I found this on Amazon. It was 40 something bucks. I'll put the actual price up on the screen. And inside that kit is two crank arms, but look at this. See that square? That means it's set up for a square taper bottom bracket. It's gonna work on all of these big box bikes with this triple chain ring set up or really any big box bike I've ever seen. I mean, if you're spending 500 or less at Walmart or any other big box store, you're gonna get square taper. So that's where this crank arm set comes in handy. It's set up so I can put a single chain ring on it. Comes with these mounting screws and nuts. Look at this. A snail chain ring comes with this kit. I, mean, I pay money. 17, 18, 20 bucks for these snail chain rings. Not only is it the snail brand that I use, but this is also a 30 tooth, which is my preferred size. And also let me mention something. This is the IXF crank arm set. I'm getting a little off track here, but this is the IXF crank arm set. And I've had people comment. They see this polished area with this lip here. They go, oh, you put your chain ring on the wrong side. Well, that's not true. As you can see, it's also, it has a lip on the back side, and that's because a 32 chain ring goes on the back. 32 and 34 would go on the front. So if you're running a 30 tooth like I do, it goes on the back. And that's going to work the same on our new action crank arm from FMFXTR, whatever brand that is. I'm going to put this 30 tooth on the back side then I'm going to mount it to this hyper hydro form because if you don't know this is the hyper hydro form that I'm going to give away to a random patron on New Year's Day. I don't want to give away just a basic bike. I've got to do something kept central to it so I'm going to add a few things. I'm going to start off by making it a one by. I'm going to use the existing square taper so the first thing I've got to do is get all this off and that's the only other expense. Because removing these crank arms does require a specialty tool, this, the Omer's Crank Arm Extractor, at least this is what I use. Now there are multiple brands, Park Tool has one, and there's some even cheaper ones, but I found this Omer stuff to be pretty reliable. I've used this one dozens and dozens of times. If it holds up for me, I think it's going to hold up for the average bike owner. $14.99, I'll put a link down in the description. So now let's get this crank arm off. and. I'll show you how to do this process. It's very simple. Now, this specific crank arm uses an 8mm hex wrench to get this bolt out. Some crank arms though, like this one, and most of them, are going to have a little cap that you pop off. It'll reveal a 15mm bolt. Just use a standard socket and ratchet to get that off. Either way, it both works the same. Just 8mm hex versus 15mm. If your bike is properly set up or properly maintained, this should be very, very snug. So it's going to take some force to get off. I've actually pre-loosened this just for this video because I'm trying to do this as fast as possible. But very simple. And now's the point. I'm going to put this Omer's tool to use. Now, I don't actually use this. I use a larger wrench just to get a little more leverage. So I'm going to take this out, but I'm separating this part and then I'm going to lightly screw this back in but not seat it. See it's recessed down in there. It's very easy. This just threads into the crank. So this is snug. Now I need to tighten on this and that's going to push in and pull this crank arm off. slowly working this pedal off. I don't know if you can tell, but it's already pulled out quite a bit. And just about have it off. There we go. Pedal off. I'm going to take my chain off, rest it on the square taper, and there we can see our square. Now it's time to do the other side. And wouldn't you know it, as I was turning the bike around to get to the non-drive side, my bike stand's clamp broke. My old trusty bike stand, I've had this thing for three years. It's actually the second brake, the other one was down lower, but I guess it's a good thing that by chance I just received this. I purchased this, I found it on Amazon. An actual park tool bike stand. I've cut it on sale for $1.99, so I guess it's a good thing that I bought it. 
kind of on a whim because I had no idea this was going to break and I do have another bike stand that I use but I wanted the clamp system on that so good timing. Really testing this bike stand <laughs> being that it's broken up there. This pressure, if you don't have a bike stand, you can just turn the bike upside down. Even though I don't use it, I always put my Omer's tool back in there, the little wrench part. So I always have it all together. Okay, so I have my crank arm, the chain ring, and then this little pack that had four nuts and bolts, but I'm going to separate. They were screwed in. I'm going to separate the nut and the bolt. I only need the top part, the bolt. Take the chain ring, and it has, see the little lip there, and the lips here. And I like to orient mine so that when is when it is at its three o'clock position you can see snail and see what teeth it is it lined up and then just snug down now when i do this permanently i will actually put loctite on these but i'm going to snug that down okay i went ahead and i tightened all these down but before i get this mounted onto the bike i've got to get the chain out of the derailleur because it's held captive by this closed derailleur point because all this is part of the mechanism up here. Now I have a chain brake tool. It's going to make it easy to get the chain separated and out, but I'm willing to bet if you didn't have the crank removal tool, you're not going to have one of these either. There's something you can do. Now this is assuming you're getting rid of this tourney derailleur and you don't plan to use it again. This one I promised to someone, but if you don't mind breaking the tourney derailleur to get your chain out, going to show you a weak point that you can exploit. I'm using a small set of pliers just to demonstrate. You would need some larger ones and you'd also want the rear wheel out, but you can see that little pin joint right there. It's riveted. You will clamp on right there with some larger pliers and work back and forth vigorously. If you have two pairs, it's even easier. Go back and forth. It'll break right there at that point and allow you to get the chain out. And now the easy part, I'm going to make sure my chain is up on the frame and out of the way. There's my new crank arm, and just to show you, same design. And I'm going to take the original bolt that I took out. You can see it's metal back here. This is actually just a water seal. I'm going to hand tighten that in. Make sure you don't strip anything, no cross threading. It will start to snug down. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put my chain on the chain ring. Okay, my camera turned off. But as far as how tight to get this, I go by the rule. There's actually torque specs for these. But I go by the rule of the local bike shop manager. And he says, Guten Titan, German spec. So snug that up really good. Now it's time to put the opposite side crank arm on. This crank arm goes on just like the other one. The only thing to note is to make sure that the cranks are at 6 and 12. If one is up, the other one needs to be down. Otherwise, put them on at the same orientation. You have kind of a kick bike. You don't want that. So 6 and 12. And just like the other side, I'm running this in and then tightening it up letting it pull itself onto that taper. And there we go, installed. A cheap square taper bottom bracket friendly way to go one by on just about any big box bike. Of course it is gonna need some pedals. I don't wanna put the factory pedals back on it. I'm thinking about using these. Remember those Ezra's that I used on the original aluminum comp project comp build? I still have them and I took them off, put Chester's on or Fuker's, one of the two, because these weren't available. People kept saying, hey, what pedal do I use? Those aren't available anymore. I think I'm going to put these on this giveaway hydroform. I think they'll go well, this new action crank arm set. But there you go. Action crank arm set comes with the snail chain ring. 
Square taper friendly, minimal tools required. If you do it right and get away with only having to buy this Omer's crank remover, I'll put the link down in the description, as well as a link for this crank arm set. Be sure to comment below if you found this helpful. And if you haven't already, I hope you subscribe and that you have that notification bell active. Thanks for watching Kev Central and have a great day.